Development of gastrointestinal tract Development of embryonic forget tube. The primitive gut is formed when a portion of the yolk sac becomes incorporated into the embryo. During the phase of gastrulation there is trilaminar disc formation. The endoderm will give rise to the gut and associated organs. The ectoderm is the outermost layer, and will create the skin and the nervous system. Between them lies the mesoderm, which will create the connective tissues and musculature in most organisms. Before gastrulation, these layers are not defined. The cavity above ectoderm is amniotic cavity while that below the endoderm is yolk sac. The embryo folds upon itself to form the embryonic gut tube for gut, midgut and hindgut the flat trilaminar embryonic disc becomes a more cylindric embryo due to the longitudinal and transverse folding that occurs as a result of embryonic growth, the placenta is formed of the cytotrophoblast syncotiotrophoblast and parietal extraembryonic mesoderm the yolk sac diminishes in size the umbilical cord connects the embryo to the mother it contains vitloinstenal duct allantois left umbilical vein right and left umbilical artery and warden's jelly. The foregut extends from the pharynx to the second part of duodenum. During the fourth week of gestation, the rudimentary stomach appears as a fusiform shaped dilation of the distal foregut. Subsequently, its appearance and position drastically changes, the latter can be better understood by visualizing a longitudinal axis and an antero-posterior axis around which the stomach rotates. The stomach rotates 90 degrees clockwise around its longitudinal axis, resulting in its left side facing anteriorly and its right side posteriorly. This explains why the left vagus nerve innervates the anterior wall, whereas the right vagus nerve innervates the posterior wall. Cellular proliferation occurs much faster in the posterior wall of the stomach than in the anterior wall, resulting in the formation of the greater and lesser curvatures, respectively. The stomach also rotates around its antero-posterior axis, resulting in the caudal end pyloric part to move upward and to the right and the cranial end cardiac part slightly downward and to the left. Thus, the stomach assumes its final position, with its pylorus located superiorly to the left and its cardia inferiorly to the right. The development of the liver begins during the fourth week of gestation, with the appearance of the hepatic diverticulum, liver bud, as an outgrowth from the ventral wall of distal foregut. The stalk connecting the diverticulum and the foregut narrows and forms the bile duct, whereas the gallbladder and the cystic duct form as a ventral outgrowth from the bile duct. Initially, the bile duct opens anteriorly into the duodenum, but ends up posteriorly due to the rotational changes of the duodenum. This positions the future liver between the foregut and ventral abdominal wall, and divides the ventral mesentery into the lesser omentum and the falciform ligament. Further development and segmentation of the liver is determined by the oxygenated blood flowing from the umbilical vein into the liver. Furthermore, the mesoderm surrounding the surface of liver differentiates into the visceral peritoneum except on its cranial surface. The latter lies in direct contact with the septum transversum, from which the central tendon of the diaphragm forms. Hence, this surface remains in contact with the future diaphragm and is never covered in visceral peritoneum, this surface is known as the bare area of the liver. Although much of the liver is derived from the foregut, hematopoietic cells, connective tissue cells, and kupfer cells all derive from the mesenchyme of the septum transversum. During the fourth week of gestation, the duodenum begins to develop from two sources, the caudal part of the foregut and the cranial part of the midgut, where the junction lies just distal to the origin of the bile duct. 
The developing duodenum forms a C-shaped loop that initially projects ventrally. However, once the stomach rotates, the duodenum rotates to the right and becomes pressed against the posterior abdominal wall, thus becoming retroperitoneal. The midgut gives rise to the distal part of duodenum till transverse colon right two-third. The derivatives of the midgut are supplied by the superior mesenteric artery during the fifth week of gestation. The midgut undergoes a rapid elongation that occurs much faster than that of the abdominal cavity, resulting in the formation of the primary intestinal loop. The cranial limb of the loop will develop into the inferior half of the duodenum, the jejunum, and proximal half of the ileum. The caudal limb of the loop will develop into the distal half of the ilium, the cecum, the ascending colon, and the proximal two-thirds of the transverse colon. By the sixth week, the continuing elongation of the midgut forces the primary intestinal loop to protrude into the umbilicus physiological herniation. Concurrently, the loop rotates 90 degrees counterclockwise around the axis of the superior mesenteric artery, resulting in the cranial limb to move caudally and to the embryo's right, and the caudal limb to move cranially and to the embryo's left. As the intestinal loops re-enter the abdomen, it rotates an additional 180 degrees counterclockwise around the axis of the superior mesenteric artery, thus having traveled for a total of 270 degrees. As a result, the cecum, being initially positioned under the liver, becomes displaced inferior. Now the dorsal mesenteries of the ascending and descending colon shorten and fold, anchoring these organs to the dorsal body wall, where they become secondarily retroperitoneal. The jejunum, ilium, cecum, and the transverse and sigmoid colon remain suspended by a short mesentery from the dorsal body wall, thus becoming intraperitoneal. The hindgut gives rise to the distal third of the transverse colon till upper two-thirds of anal canal. By the seventh week of gestation, the urorectal septum, a layer of mesoderm, grows between the allantois and the hindgut. It divides the cloaca into the urogenital sinus and the anorectal canal, while its tip forms the future perineal body. The urogenital sinus forms the future bladder, parts of the urethra, and the phallus, whereas the anorectal canal develops into the rectum and most of the anal canal. 